Good afternoon, everybody. So glad that you are here joining us. I'm Kimber Armstrong with the Better Business Bureau in Atlanta, and we are happy to um, have some great guests today for an Empowering Entrepreneurs webinar for you. Um, before we get started with the webinar, I just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about what BBB's got going on in the next weeks. So next week, we are hosting two online webinars on reputation management. That, that will be Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning, and I'll put the link to our LinkedIn page in the chat in just a few minutes if you'd like to sign up for those, um, one or the other of those. And uh, also, if you haven't already liked and followed our LinkedIn page, that would be awesome if you want to do that. And then I'm, I will also drop a link to our Instagram page. And if you haven't been following us on Instagram, you're missing out. and um, very entertaining and I actually put them in my presentations a lot because they really get good laughs so um, make sure you check those social media platforms of ours out and then also next week we will be in Athens presenting repu reputation management in person to the SBDC state annual meeting and we just wrapped up a student project with Emory University last week, and we'll wrap up another student project with University of Georgia in two weeks. So we've been busy, we had a lot going on, and if you're interested to see any of that, again, just go to our social media pages. You can find it on Instagram and LinkedIn, our pictures um, from those events. So today we do have a treat. We are um, learning from two professionals how to unlock the secrets to securing funding for your business. And we've got Sandra, Sandra Font, excuse me, uh, who's the senior director at ACE Women's Business Centers. That's Access to Capital. Um, they have two locations. There's one in the Metro Atlanta region and also one in Savannah. And her topic today, she will tell you about ACE services and small business access to capital. And then we have also Mr. Lewis Berger. He's Lender Relations and Economic Development Specialist from the SBA. And he, his topic today is the five C's of credit. And I wanted to uh, let you know that this is recorded, so you will have access to the recording um, if you can't make all of it or if you know of anyone that, that wanted to be here but couldn't attend. Um, there's... Uh, I wanted you also to know that both presenters will be sharing their slide decks after the presentation, so we'll get those emailed out to you. And Lewis, I'm going to step back and let you come on and begin with your presentation. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen. I hope you can hear me okay. <clears throat> yes, we can hear you. And can you see my screen with the SBA logo on there? Yes, we see it. Excellent. Well, again, I'm with the U.S. Small Business Administration, the SBA in the Georgia District Office. And again, my name is Lewis Berger, and of course, I'll be presenting the five C's of credit today. A little bit about me. I owned uh, businesses for about 20, 25 years before joining the SBA. I've now been with the SBA about 12 or 13 years, and those businesses I owned, I uh, part-time and did full-time. I've borrowed a lot of years, and I'll be trying to explain the five C's of credit as I perceive it from a borrower's perspective. Entrepreneurs by nature are risk takers. Lenders, typically not. So you have to understand kind of from their perspective, and Sandra will be explaining more in a few minutes, but some lenders can be very, very risk averse, and you just have to know what their business model is and why they do that, so you can be better prepared to get a successful loan application. So that leads me into the five C's of credit that the lender will use to determine your credit worthiness, and they are character, Capacity cash flow, what that simply means, you have enough cash flow to make debt service payments. You have assets to collateralize the loan. Capital, capital contribution, you have to have skin in the game, and that skin in the game is usually cash. 
in condition. That usually means like economic condition. Are we in a recession? So let's go through these one at a time. <clears throat> the first is character. That's your personal reputation and your integrity. The two bullet points I want to share with you are is the lender will expect you to have a strong management experience in the industry you do business and they will check your past credit history. They will pull your credit score. Now, my experience has been the first thing a lender is going to do if you request credit from them is to pull your credit score. My experience is each lender is going to have a minimum threshold or a minimum credit score for them to consider your credit request. It's my experience at that point, it's either a no or no go to start looking at your credit application, your credit request more closely. Obviously, these are the three major credit reporting uh, agencies. You've heard of all of them. I highly recommend that periodically you pull your credit report from each one of these and make sure there are, are no errors in it. If there are errors, you can dispute those. And each one of the websites from Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian will, Experian will explain how you can dispute errors on your credit report. I have a lot of experience in this, how this credit score is calculated. I used to teach this to customers, but your credit score is most affected by your last 24 months of history. Now, as you can see by this pie chart here, about 35% of your credit score is made up from your past payment history. So the obvious thing there is just pay your bills on time. 30% is made up of how much you owe. Now, what does that mean? Personal advice that I have experienced in this is for your credit card debt, do not borrow more than 25 to 30 percent of your credit limit. You do not want to max out your credit cards. If your credit cards are maxed out, then that is going to negatively affect your credit score. Again, keep your credit on your credit card about 25 to 30 percent of the maximum amount, and this will affect positively your credit score. Types of credit. I already mentioned the credit card. Other types are term loans, such as a car loan or a mortgage loan. Also, back to the amount owed. When you start paying down a car loan or a mortgage loan, it's going to show that your You've paid some of that down over time, and that will positively affect your credit score. New credit. New credit, if you get new credit cards, that could, neg that could negatively affect your credit score. Obviously, the longer you've had credit, the more positive your credit score is there. Okay, the second. C is capacity or cash flow. And the question the lender is going to ask, does your business make sufficient profit to pay its bills, including the new debt loan service? You have to have free cash flow now to pay the debt service on the new proposed debt. Again, let me explain that because I get a lot of questions from new borrowers. They don't understand that. You have to have free cash flow now to show that you can support the new debt. 
If you have an existing business, the lender is going to look at your profit and loss, your past profit statements, your tax returns, et cetera, to confirm you have that free cash flow to support the new debt. If you're a startup, and Sonia will talk about this more in just a few moments, you're going to have to show from your personal resources that you can afford to make the debt service payments now on the future debt. The third is collateral. Simply, it's an asset to secure the loan. If the lender, if you default on your loan, then the lender is going to take the collateral, those assets that collateralize the loan. Essentially, they are going to foreclose on those assets. The lender will then sell those assets to pay off the loan balance. If the sale of those assets is insufficient to pay off the principal balance of the loan, the lender is going to come to you personally for the balance. Now, this last bullet here, I get this sometimes. Every lender is going to expect you to sign a personal guarantee for your business loan. If you're not a Ford Motor Company or a General Motors or IBM, you will have to personally guarantee your business loan. The fourth C is capital contribution. You will have to make equity injection to your proposed expansion plan. The lender is going to expect you to put skin in the game. How much? It's going to vary, but it could be anywhere from 10 to 30 percent, maybe more. The fast last C is condition, and this may be your aunt beyond your ability control. And what I mean by that is a, a lender is going to consider how your industry is doing. Is it doing well or is it doing poor? For example, during COVID, nobody was leaving their home. They certainly weren't going to restaurants. They certainly were not traveling. That is a condition beyond your control, but the lenders may not consider new loan requests to the hospitality industry or restaurant expansion when COVID was strong. Some lenders I have found get saturated in certain industries. And the one example that comes to mind is hospitality, the hotel and motel industry. So if a lender is saturated or they feel they have too many loans in a certain industry like hospitality, for example, the lender may not be accepting any more applications, loan applications for that industry. General recession, the general economy, you cannot control that. If we're in a deep recession, there are more jobs being lost than created, then the lender is going to be very, very cautious about making new loans. My point is on this C, the fifth C condition, this may be beyond your control. So, also, the bottom line, the amount you wish to borrow, you may not be eligible to borrow. The lender will determine the amount you're eligible to borrow using the five C's. Again, just because you want a certain amount of money for your expansion plan, does not necessarily make you eligible to receive that much money. Before you apply for any loan, you need to have a very comprehensive business plan. Do not, under any circumstances, approach any lender without this comprehensive business plan. Here are the bullets that you need to put in your business plan. 
These are the questions the lender is going to ask. Be prepared. Now, the SBA certainly has resources to help you prepare that business plan. The Learning Center is an excellent resource. I recommend all of you take a strong look at that. Our template to start writing your business plan is very, very good. There's the link. And of course, we have small business consulting partners. Here's the four listed here. SCORE, the Small Business Development Centers, and Sonia's ACE has Women's Business Center in Norcross. They're very, very good. If you are a veteran, you need to reach out to our Veterans Business Outreach Center in Warner Robins and form that relationship. These counselors are very accustomed to reviewing your business plan and preparation of a loan request. That is much of what they do is help people prepare an expansion plan. Part of that expansion plan being capital request. Grants, I know this is somewhat off topic, but it always comes up. So I want to go ahead and address it right from the from the get go. Currently, the SBA does not have any grants whatsoever directly to small businesses. The grants and the loan programs that were appropriated by Congress in the CARES Act has been exhausted. There are no more funds available. COVID. Now, I've just provided four bullet points here of where you can do your own research to see what kind of grants you may be eligible for. And also our district office. This is the these this is the link to our Georgia district office webpage. I highly recommend that you look at our calendar to see the upcoming training events from all our partners, all our resource partners throughout Georgia. On the website, it will do a very good explanation of our loan programs. If you're considering government contracting, there's good information on our website. If you're a startup, there's good links there too of how to register your name with the Georgia Secretary of State, what kind of business license and zoning license you will be required. If you have a general question of us in the Georgia District Office, please send us an email at this email address. And that way your question can be sent to the uh, subject matter expert in our office. And I am done. There is my, obviously my direct email address. If you want to send me a direct question, I'll be glad to help. And I assume we're going to open this up for questions now, or are we going to wait for Sonia to finish? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and wait till the end of the webinar okay. for, for questions. And I put that in the chat so the audience understands that you'll both be um, available for Q&A at the end. And okay. thank you so much, Lewis. Great, great, great information. So um, I'll stop you, sharing that. OK, perfect. And then, Sandra, if you'll get your slide deck queued up, we'll be ready for you. Very good. We see your slide deck, Sandra. OK, and can you hear me? Yes. OK, perfect. I don't know if you see me, but I'm showing my face just in case. We see you. <laughs> oh, OK, OK, OK. I don't see it, but good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Kimber, for the opportunity to present along with the Better Business Bureau of North Georgia. And Louis, always so nice to partner with the Small Business Administration. So I'm going to go uh, ahead and uh, start talking a little bit about the services that we provide at ACE and also how you can apply for a loan um, through ACE, Access to Capital for Entrepreneurs. And Louis made it very easy for me um, because I was also going to touch on a few of the fees that he spoke. So I'm going to go a little bit faster when I get there, but let's go and uh, start. For the ones that don't know, ACE stands for Access to Capital for Entrepreneurs. We are a nonprofit organization that was founded in 1999 by our current president, Ms. Grace Freaks. And the reason why she started this organization is because she was on the board of a technical college in North Georgia. Students were graduating. 
wanting to become business owners and they couldn't get access to funding. And that's when she decided to apply for the grant and started um, providing uh, loans to uh, small business owners. Um, we are a nonprofit organization and community development financial institution, which means that we mainly focus on providing capital, coaching and connections to help borrowers create and grow sustainable businesses that generate jobs. And through capital, coaching and connections, um, we focus on helping women, minorities and low to moderate income business owners. And we are proud to say that since the year 2000, ACE has loaned um, over $140 million in loans to 2,400 entrepreneurs, and we have helped create or retain around 19,000 jobs in Georgia. We are very proud of the impact that we're making to this wonderful state and our program. So let me tell you a little bit about um, ACE, our organization. So capital, I'm going to touch that later. So we're going to skip that. Um, business advisory services. What does that mean? So we do provide loans to business owners, as I mentioned earlier. And once a client becomes a uh, a loan client, that person is going to be assigned to a team that we have of financial advisors. So business owners will have the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one coaching and discuss any challenges, opportunities, any type of questions that they have in regards to the business. Mainly we focus on finances because we want to help those business owners be successful and we know that if you are successful you're going to be successful and you're going to be paying your loan and it's going to it's going to be a wonderful partnership that a uh, service is provided to the business owners at no cost at the same time we have other tools videos and support to help those loan clients also scale as they are part of the organization and paying the loan. At the same time, we also have partnerships with organizations throughout Georgia. Um, we created a few years ago, a high performing group. That group is mainly for women and business owners that gen uh, generate in revenues over $250,000. So they meet quarterly, they share best practices. We bring speakers. We have someone in the staff dedicated to them. That's one of the benefits of our loan clients. We also partner very closely with Morehouse Innovation Entrepreneurship Center, with the Russell Center, with the Latin American Association. We put trainings and cohorts together. So we invite our loan clients to take part of those as well. And then lastly, connections. Connections, what it means if, if we cannot help you with anything, we'll make sure that we'll connect you to someone that can. We are a small business administration resource partner. And we have partnerships with Chambers of Commerce, government entities, other nonprofits. And we can also make introductions to other clients. So business to business introductions or business to client introductions. That's in a nutshell, our programs. And I oversee the Women's Business Center, um, which Louis said, we are a small business resource partner, which means we are partially funded by the Small Business Administration. And we do follow their guidelines. And our mission is to provide a, um, financial training, education, connections, tools um, to small business owners. And we focus on three phases of the business cycle, which is planning, implementation, and growth. We have, um, there are 145 women's business centers throughout the country. So each state at least has one. And ACE oversees two of the Women's Business Center in Georgia, the one that covers Metro Atlanta, uh, where I sit, and we have another one in Savannah. And yes, I have to brag because last year we got the a national uh, award, the Business Excellence Award of the Women's Business Center that was presented to us by the Small Business Administration, by Administrator Guzman last year. So we're proud we still have that crown until next month. Here I have listed some of the services that we offer. Since Kimber is going to send you this presentation, I'm not going to go over them uh, because I only have 20 minutes. But yes, um, please visit our website. Um, 
fill out the client intake form and we'll be happy to to provide you training, coaching, co uh, access to resources, anything. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, three weeks, we have uh, marketing in digital world training. It's going to take place downtown Norcross. Uh, that one is in person because we'll be providing lunch. And also on May 18th, um, sales. Everybody reaches out to us. They want to get more sales. They want to get more clients. So we're bringing two experts. That's a hybrid training. So please, please join us. Um, Louis talk of the importance of having a business plan, especially if you are a business owner and you're going to be applying for a business loan. They're going to ask you for a business plan. We have a wonderful tool. It's called Dream Builder. It's completely free, available in English and Spanish. Although I do speak Spanish, I recommend to everybody to do the business plan in English because if they're going to have to present it to a lending institution, it has to be in English. Dream Builder is a platform of 13 courses that walks you through um, the process of how to operate a business, from marketing, from the idea, from the finances, from the pricing, everything. Um, and then as you go through the courses, you answer a few questions at the end of the each course. And then at the end, you just click on business plan generator and there you are. You have it in a Word document and you can edit it and present it to anyone that you like. So take advantage of that. You can access um, Dream Builder in our uh, website. Okay, access to capital. We have Jamin Monten here. We love to use our clients in our collateral. She's a very successful business owner here in Atlanta, one of our loan clients. She has a security company and she always joins our trainings and is wonderful. And briefly, I'm going to cover each of these buckets, but please know that I'm going to cover each of these buckets talking about what ACE as a community developed financial institution looks when you apply to a loan through us. I do have to say before I start that we are only funding businesses that have been operating a minimum of two years. And if you are a startup under two years, I do have a resource for you at the end. So let's do it. Um, what we're going to be looking is at the personal credit. The personal credit gives the underwriting uh, team a snapshot of the present and past payment history. And as Louis mentioned, there are three credit counseling, uh, three credit agencies. The one that we're going to be looking at is Equifax. And our minimum score starts at 600. So you have to have a 600 of minimum score to apply for our lowest amount of uh, microloans, which starts at 15,000. If you are not at 600, I highly encourage you to connect with a credit counseling agency. Feel free to email me if you want that information. I used to work for one for seven years. So it, it would be very uh, good that if you're not at 600, you have a one on one counseling with a credit counseling agency. They'll be able to look a snapshot of your credit and provide you an action plan of how to improve it. OK. Um, and like Louis said, you can download a, an annual credit report for free. It's very important um, that you always know what your credit score is because it, when applying for a loan, that's the first thing that they're going to look. People do ask me sometimes if we look at the credit score of the business, we don't. We're going to look at your personal credit score, although it is very good that you also start building with an advanced uh, credit history. You can get a, a dance number there, um, but that's for another day. OK, cash flow is the money, like Louis said, that goes in and out of the business. And we want to see a positive cash flow that indicates that the company has money moving in and out. Cash is customers. So we're buying your products or services, which allows business owners to settle on debts on time. So um, yes, the the underwriting team is going to look at cash flow. They're going to ask you for financial reports. Um, so please have all of them ready when applying. 
theories where I'm going to go a little bit faster because I know that Louis already touched on all these. Capital investment is the cash injection. What's your investment? What's your skin in the game? Please, please, please make sure that you track from the moment you start the business all the money that you invest in it. Uh, that money can be used in the future as the cash that you have invested. So registrations, licenses, anything that you pay, even if it's an Excel document, please keep track of everything. I know that businesses, when they start, they don't have a lot of funds and they may not have money to get QuickBooks, but even if it's an Excel, so please keep track of all the money that you're investing. And at ACE, we're going to require a 10 to 15% of capital investment. And that is also depending on the amount of the loan. It's usually more on commercial loans, uh, which are higher amounts, close to 100,000, where we're going to be requesting you 10 to 15% capital to invest also uh, on the loan. We want to just make sure that you're also responsible throughout this journey. And collateral can consist of the assets that are usable in the business as well, the personal assets that remain outside the business. Most traditionally, lenders will require with a small business loan. Um, they're going to look at the, the, the assets that you have more than collateral one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that we're going to look at collateral one-on-one -on -one ratio when is a commercial loan, which that means is like if you're going to apply for a loan for $100,000, you're going to have to show collateral of $100,000. We really want you to make the payment. We really don't want to take to your collateral, but of course, we also need uh, to have something to secure that loan as well. And then if you're purchasing, for instance, a truck or vehicle or for your business, then the way that we're going to send the payment is going to be to the vendor and you're part purchasing that asset. And that asset also can be used as collateral. OK. And the types of loans. So our uh, small business loans and micro loans by the Small Business Administration, and we do provide uh, small business loans, uh, and they start at fifteen thousand and go up to fifty thousand. And our commercial loans go from fifty thousand up to a million. Our average usually in commercial loans is around two hundred fifty thousand. But then sometimes we do get requests from clients that they want to purchase a property, and that's where it gets sometimes close to one million, and we can consider that as well. And I'll be more than happy. I am not a loan officer, but I can connect anyone to a loan officer after if needed. And here a little bit of more information um, about the loans. Our rate right now, it's 12%. That's fixed rate. Thank you to our friends at the Federal Reserve Bank that, the, you know, they keep increasing interest rates. So unfortunately, we do have to increase them as well. I do have to say that sometimes we have programs, we get funding from partners that uh, that money is provided to the organization to lower the interest rate. If we do have funds available, that's something that the loan officer will bring up to you. Um, sometimes we also get funds from government entities like Fulton County. We have a program with Fulton County. Um, if someone was affected by COVID, we do have a special loan program at a lower interest rate for businesses that are in that location. So it depends on what you are and it depends on what we have available. The interest rate sometimes can go down. The origination fee for a small business loans is 3% and for commercial loans is 2%. And that's how you can use the loan is for working capital, vehicles, inventory, equipment, real estate. The terms go up to 60 months, which is five years. Sometimes people decide to pay the loans earlier. You're not going to have an additional fee or penalty for that. You're more than welcome to pay your loan whenever you can. Um, there's going to be an application fee of $50. So I always tell everybody, just make sure before you apply that you meet all the requirements, you know, and, and I know that Kimber is going to send this presentation so you can take a look at them as well. Again, 
So please, you know, don't pay if you don't think that you'll meet them. There's going to be a small third party application fee sometimes. And I am going to reiterate these businesses have to be operating for two years before they apply and must be based in the state of Georgia and be a for profit business. We are not funding uh, non profits. I know that sometimes we do get those requests. And this is how you can get ready. If you apply for a loan under 50,000, they're going to ask you to submit one year of your tax returns. If it's over uh, 50,000, it's going to be two years of tax returns. At the same time, they're going to ask you to present the profit and loss and balance sheet, um, one year or two years, depending on the loan. If you have a partner, that owns the business 20% uh, or more, they're going to look at the personal credit, a personal financial statements of that individual as well. Have that in mind, especially if you're starting a business and you don't know if you're going to bring a partner, maybe putting that part, if the credit is not that good, you know, finances are not where they should be and you're looking for a loan, put it, give that partner less than 20% so that person won't have to warranty the loan. And then lastly, uh, we're going to look at the uh, debt to income ratio. Uh, it has to be under 45%. And this is how you calculate it. Pretty much you, how much money do you bring in? What are the expenses? And then you divide it. And that's how you can come up with the percentage. Um, and that's something that the loan officer will run with you. But just wanted to give you some information on that. And last but not least, um, for all those individuals that are here and need uh, money to start a business, um, please contact our partner, Lead Fund, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie is a good friend of ACE. We collaborate very closely together. They are also an SBA micro lender here in the state of Georgia. And they are funding businesses um, up to 50,000. I talked to her last week and she said that they even go up to 250,000. They're going to request you for a business plan. So have that into consideration. If you are a startup, you need to have a business plan and you have to have income coming in. So it is very important. I always tell everybody that is starting, keep your job for a while until you're bringing some income into the business, because if you're going to apply for a loan, it's good to have uh, an income, you know, a salary of, of your current job, and then I start a business on the side and see how it goes. And then with Forest National Bank, in case you don't know, those are the ones that are inside Walmart. They do provide line of credits. Sometimes people are looking for line of credits. You can go to them. They do provide, they, they're going to fund you a line of credit if you are a startup. And then DeKalb County has a special uh, program uh, just for the county businesses there. You can go to their website, uh, the, co the community development department, and it's there. And of course, our friends at the SBA have more resources available for you there. So just take a look when you have a chance. And that's all I have for now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sandra. That was great information. And um, let's try with question and answer to raise hands and we'll call on you. Um, you can also put it in the chat if you have any questions, but we'll go ahead and open up and you know let us know if you if your question is for Sandra or for Lewis as well. Gibran, you can come off, off mute. Gibran, we can't hear you. If you have a question, can you come off mute and you're welcome to speak? Okay, yes, I'd like to ask a question um, for a commercial loans. If you're, can those loans be used for purchasing a business? Yes, to acquire a business, yes. We're gonna, what's gonna happen in that case, they're gonna request that you get the, the tax returns and financials, all the financial statements to the for the business to see that it's profitable. Thank you. 
You're welcome. You're welcome. No questions. We did that well, Luis. Yeah, I know. No we did. Questions. <laughs> we we either answered all their questions or we put them to sleep. I don't want to. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Jabron, did you just not take your hand down or did you have another question? No, I have one more question. OK, sure. Um, it said uh, 10 to 15 percent down for the commercial loan. If I'm in negotiation with the seller of a business and they agree to um, take a note of, say, 10 percent of the selling price, would that count towards that? down that 10 to 15 percent or does that have to come directly from my personal fund i think it has to come from yours but i am not gonna tell you for sure because i don't know in that case you're gonna have to contact me and i'll connect you to a commercial loan officer and then you can ask all the questions you have about your specific case Okay, well, you answered the most important one that it can be used to purchase a business. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm -hmm. No, no problem, but feel free to reach out to me. Really, I don't mind. I get questions all the time. <laughs> okay. And, and let me jump in too on yes, that answer. Yes, please, Louis, go. <laughs> if uh, the, the, the correct answer from the SBA loan program side is maybe. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, um, and I, jump in to say that first of all it it's going to depend on the lender what they were going to require and then if it is a 7a guaranteed bank loan or credit loan credit union loan then our standard operating procedures come in and put a lot of handcuffs and restrictions on that seller note most notable is it cannot be a balloon note. That seller financing has to be a full term note. Does that make sense? So, um, how I mean, the business you're speaking of, how much does it cost? Well, on the market, um, it just depends on where you are uh, eligible to enter the space it can be anywhere from six million down to three hundred and fifty thousand okay that's a, that's a reasonable 400k so you know you're just going to have to talk with sonia or and, and see what they're going to require as far as cash injection and then their you know their, their policy on seller seller seconds yeah and we don't do seven a's Jabron, I want to make sure I make that clear. We don't do seven days. Okay, thank you both. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole nother discussion. That's a yes. whole nother rabbit hole right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that Louis can can provide you a list of who does seven days, but we unfortunately don't. Yeah, and if you want to shoot me a note, uh, email, we can we can discuss it more if you wish. Awesome. Okay, thank, thank you, you both. And we had a question from Colleen in the chat asking, are you limited to how many loans you can take? And is there a waiting period? Um, for, you, for instance, you, if you've okay. got a small loan and you paid that off within a year or two and um, then went tried to get a commercial loan, do you have to, is there a waiting period in between? Oh, no, the two? no, we have people that they have a loan, they pay it off, and then they apply for another one that it's even larger. Yeah, that, that's not a problem. I know a lady that has applied for three loans, one after the other one. Okay. <laughs> Questions. What else have you guys? Does the same go for if you're denied? I'm sorry. If you're denied a loan, do you have a waiting period before you have to apply for another? No, I've never heard of that. You just need to be ready, you know, with the requirements and meet them. And, you know, when I started here five years ago, um, there was a lady in the room that I'm sitting right now where we do the trainings that 
she her credit score wasn't where it was supposed to be. Um, she couldn't warranty the loan. So she went to the credit counseling agency that we recommended her. She increased her, her loan where it was supposed to be to apply with us, brought a warrant for and applied. And this lady has applied already for three loans with us, one after the other one. So people just, you know, you apply, you get denied. We tell you this is what you should do. Go get ready and they come back. Let me jump into I reiterate that. Uh, if you will meet with one of our business counseling partners, obviously ACE is one of them. Mm -hmm. They can kind of I hesitate to use the word pre-qualify, but they will probably can give you a good indication of what you could be eligible for. Yeah. As I was saying in my slide deck, it's not what you want, it's what you're eligible for. Yeah. And so um, ACE, Women's Center, um, SCORE, the Small Business Development mm -hmm. Centers, or the uh, v Veterans Business Outreach Center, this is what much of what they do is answer that question is, how much are you eligible for? And I would what? like to add, he, oh, I'm sorry, you go. No, here. no, go ahead, Sonia, go ahead. No, go ahead. I would like to add that that's exactly the case uh, because we do get people, you know, calls, hi, I want to apply for $100,000. Okay. And then they meet with the loan officer and usually it's a conversation with the loan officer once you submit the documents. And then that lady that I was talking to specifically uh, before, she wanted to buy equipment for a training, a gym. And she told the loan officer at 100,000, the loan officer sat with her, look at the financial statements and everything and said, why don't you start purchasing use equipment? And instead of maybe 100,000, we can start with 50,000. And that's what they did. They are going to have to look at your finances and what you can afford. And then, you know, uh, that that's usually how is determined the the amount of the loan. Correct, Louis? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I've started asking people who call our office looking for loans. I don't ask them anymore how much they want to borrow. I ask them, how much are you eligible to borrow for? Yeah. And usually you hear crickets on the other <laughs> end of the line because they 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 never thought about asking, you know, having to answer that question. So mm -hmm. um, and we do have in our website a uh, uh, loan calculator. You just go over there and you say, OK, 150,000. Well, go there and see how much that payment would be on a monthly basis. And if it's 2000, you're running, your, you're operating your business. You know what you're bringing in and out. You're going to see, oh, my gosh, I cannot go with 50,000. Maybe I have to start with 25. So it's good. And what I'm hearing from both of you is a big piece of this is educating educating mm -hmm. your clients and that's it's huge because people don't know what they don't know right and there's a lot to it and it can be kind of intimidating and scary for people I think you know but it's um, I, I love what you're both sharing and keeping track of your finances that is so important understanding your finances and we all the SBA resource partners uh, together with SBDCs and of course we all provide financial education trainings. If you don't understand well your finances, please take advantage of them. Educate yourself. And, and you know, uh, you may not want to hire a CPA when you start a business. Hire a bookkeeper. It's cheaper. Um, but, but please keep track of, you need to know how to operate your business. Um, finances are so important. Yeah. Yes, they're huge, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, did anyone have any more questions? It's um, it's about ten minutes to three, and um, if you have more, you're you're welcome to ask. And if not, we can wrap things up. Jabron, did you have another question? Yes, the terms is sixty months the absolute best that can be no. done in terms of cash flow for the business that you're trying to acquire. Because the the longer the term, obviously, the, the more cash you can leave in the business. It's well, it's it's usually it's usually sixty months. You know, micro loans. The the larger the amount, we may go a little bit higher, uh, but that's case by case. In general, it's it's fifty months. But if you're gonna ask for a million, you know, 
that's another story. So, so it's, it's well, basically case. determined by the financials. Mm -hmm. By okay. the and the amount of the loan and the amount. Oh, of the, the loan. amount. Okay, gotcha. The amount of the loan. Yeah. And and let me jump in too. It's also going to be a function of the collateral. Collateral. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're offering commercial real estate as collateral, you m might get a longer term. If there's you know different assets. That are going to depreciate quickly, like trucks. Yeah. Uh, you may not get a term, a long term. It all depends. It all depends. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's really kind of hard to answer without knowing everything. Specific. And and each lender may have a different answer for you. Okay. That's why I like to say case by case. Yes, you <laughs> ditto, case by case. It all depends. <laughs> yeah. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you for sharing some of your afternoon with us. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Lewis. And we look forward to seeing you at one of our future webinars. Have a good day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.